Okay, so it's ten. Hello. Okay, it's ten a.m. Tehran mm -hmm. time, ten thirty Islamabad time. Um, hello and good morning to everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, my name is Biti Mortazavi. I am the director of international affairs at Iran Ch Iran um, Virtual Expo, uh, the very platform we are having this event on. Virtual Expo. The excuse me. Can you hear me? Yes, we do. Okay, great. Thank you. So, um, and so uh, the webinar is organized by, uh, in collaboration between Tehran Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Embassy of uh, Islamic Republic, Republic of Pakistan in Tehran, and the Federation of Pakistan Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Uh, we are at the moment having over 50 people as our audience. I would like to welcome them all and uh, let them know that this session is being recorded and uh, soon will be av available on YouTube and Apparat. And uh, also it is being broadcasted uh, live at the same time on Iran Virtual Expo Instagram account. <laughs> So I think it's time to have a look at the agenda for today. Uh, we will start with an address by uh, Mr. His Excellency Mr. Hassan Nurian, Consul General of Iran uh, in Karachi, followed by an address by Mr. Masood Ahmad, Trade and Investment Counselor of Pakistan in Tehran, uh, then we will have uh, a presentation by Mr. Halaj, Deputy for International Affairs uh, of Tehran Chamber of Commerce. Uh, then uh, we will have uh, uh, some notes from Mr. Najam al Hassan Jawa, Chairman of uh, Pakistan Iran Business Council um, of Federation of Pakistan Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Uh, then uh, some notes from Mr. Uh, Nariman Sadri, uh, the CEO of uh, a pharmaceutical company in, Tehran, in Iran, which is Darman Ara Company. Uh, then uh, an address by uh, Mr. Togir Al Haq, uh, President of Pharmaceutical Association of Pakistan, and uh, the uh, Mr. Dr. Muhammad Ali Rizai. Uh, would give some speech on chairman as a chairman of the Union of Manufacturers and Exporters of Medical Plants and Food Products. And uh, then Dr. Amir Hossein Moini will give a speech on um, the re relevant issues. Uh, he's the board member of Iranian Dietary Supplementary Manufacturers Syndicate. And as the last step, which is not the least, uh, we will go over to the questions and would try to provide some answers to uh, the audience. So I think we would start with uh, the speech by uh, His Excellency, Mr. Hassan Nurian. Can you hear me, Mr. Nurian? Hello, do you have my voice? Um, yes, we do. Okay, great. So, is Mr. Nurian here? Oh, okay. Good morning, sir. Good morning uh, to you and uh, all of the audiences, dear speakers, distinguished uh, traders and investors, ladies and gentlemen, salam alaikum. At the outset, I would like uh, to express my sincere thanks and uh, appreciation to the organizers of this uh, webinar, and in particular to the Tehran Chamber of Commerce, Mines, Industries and Agriculture, and the Federation of Pakistan Chamber of Commerce, Mines and Industry, and in particular, Iran Pakistan Business Council of FPCCI. As you are well aware, Iran and Pakistan as the two neighbor countries uh, hold many aspects in common and enjoy a high level of diplomatic relations. But despite the determination of the top officials 
of the two countries to promote the bilateral trade beside the diplomatic and cultural ties, we are still far to make balance in all types of mutual relations. The new president of the Islamic Republic of Iran has also announced that deepening of relations with neighboring countries will be on top priority in his foreign policy. He has given term these countries as Iran's relatives. Fortunately, good steps have been taken recently for promotion of trade, which include inauguration of the crossing borders of the Mand Pishin and the border in Gab Dreamdown near Gawadar and Chabahar of Iran. As per information we have received, the both sides simultaneously approved the opening of border markets to strengthen the commercial volume between Iran and Pakistan. You know, the joint population of Iran and Pakistan stands at 300 million people, and it can be a good market for importers and exporters of the two countries. But it seems that we must work much more in increase the recognition of each other's capabilities in all sectors, and in particular in pharmaceutical and healthcare economy. Nowadays, all the nations and countries across the world are affected by the phenomenal spread of the COVID-19. This disease has not only proved to be a health crisis for the world population, but also hit the economic sector extremely, and it rendering many workers jobless, reduce of the governmental incomes, and immensely bringing negative consequences for services, production, transportation, and all other sectors related to global economy. It is obvious that the sector which drew the most attention during this pandemic is the healthcare sector, obliging the investors to invest in the field of health, production and supply of medical equipments, such as oxygen cylinders, medicines, disinfectants, face masks, ventilators, vaccines, and other items which are now the most important and are very much in demand. At the current situation, these items need to be produced on a large scale and supplied to the pandemic affected countries. And it thus provides us with a good opportunity for expansion of our bilateral cooperation in pharmaceutical and healthcare areas. As you know, many European and Western countries refused to provide vaccines and medical equipments to the Islamic Republic of Iran under the excuse of US sanctions. But same to the last four decades, this time again the young Iranian scientists relying to their scientific knowledge and by their own ability succeeded in producing the indigenous vaccines. We are witnessing that in our countries of Iran and Pakistan, thousands of people have lost their lives due to the coronavirus over the last and a half years. And at this moment also, unfortunately, thousands of them are hospitalized. So our mutual cooperation in the field of supply of medical raw materials, exchange of experiences, investment in joint production of medicines and meeting the needs of each other may be given priority in our common plans. While some technical and administrative barriers such as lack of a banking channel hindered our economic relations in reaching the satisfactory level, I'm confident that with the will and determination of the leaders of the two countries, these impediments will get removed. I hope through utilizing the existing potentiality, like reaping the benefits of the Park Iran joint investment company, which is ready to financially support our joint investments 
and through opening of new crossing borders as well, using the Islamabad, Tehran, Istanbul rail and road corridor, I mean ITI ECO, which offers over 30% reduction in rail fares compared to traditional routes. Utilization of the air cargo from Iran air direct flights from Karachi to Tehran and other infrastructures, we will be able to witness the increasing of our mutual relation. I conclude my speech by expressing my thanks again to all of you, dear ones, for your attention and patience. And I wish to reach a very uh, good result in today's meeting. And proudly I announce my readiness to assist you all in possible ways in reaching the desired goals. Wishing you all the best and thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Nurian. Uh, so to wrap up what he he was trying to say is that this about the significance of Pakistan as a um, as a neighboring country to Iran and uh, uh, the tr as a trade partner and uh, how the healthcare. Uh, sector has been in the spotlight with the outspread of uh, COVID-19, which are we are both countries are affected at the at, um, at the moment. And uh, so, what Mr. Nurian was trying to offer was uh, exchange experiences between the two countries and um, the raw materials as well uh, to produce uh, production uh, of materials as well uh, of uh, medical devices and pharmaceutical products. And uh, so, of course, as a neighboring country, it's a great trade partner for us. Thank you very much, Mr. Nuria. You're welcome. Thank you. So, um, as uh, our next address would be given by Mr. Masood Ahmad, uh, he's the Trade and Investor Counselor of Pakistan in Tehran. Mr. Ahmad, do you have my voice? Uh, thank you very much. Hello, uh, good morning. First of all, uh, I would uh, uh, like to thank His Excellency Mr. Nurian for delivering a very comprehensive um, uh, speech I'm sorry, Mr. Ahmed, I'm covering sorry to interrupt. all um, important aspects. And secondly, I am grateful to the Chamber Ahmed, of can Commerce you hear me? I'm sorry. and Pakistan Hello? Iran Business Council of FPCCI for joining weak. hand uh, to organize this uh, very yeah, please see. I can't hear you well, Mr. Ahmed. Your voice is okay, and your voice is a little yes. bit. Can you hear me? Weak. Okay, that's perfect. Perfect. Thank you. That's great. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, His Excellency Mr. Nurian, the Consul General of uh, Iran in Pakistan for delivering a very effective speech uh, covering all important uh, aspects of trade between the two countries. And secondly, I would like to thank uh, Tehran Chamber of Commerce and uh, Pakistan-Iran Business Council of FPCCI for joining hand to organize this important uh, webinar between the two countries. Uh, in pharmaceutical sector, which has uh, mostly been the ignored sector when talking of uh, trade between the two countries. I would uh, just like to extend further what uh, His Excellency Mr. Mr. Nurian uh, stated that Pakistan and Iran are uh, two brotherly neighboring countries tied together by the string of commonalities of religion, culture, and history of both the countries. In recent years, we have witnessed much improvement in bilateral relations of both the countries. This improvement is definitely the result of frequent interaction of leadership of the countries with utmost sincerity, opening of new border crossing points of Gub and Mand Pishin alongside uh, the signing of MOU on uh, sustainable border market will take the warmth of the relationship further up on the trajectory of our friendship. 
the benefit of improved relationship will further deepen if it translates into commercial and economic ties also it has been observed that our bilateral trade statistics have been fluctuating over the years which shows that the potential of our bilateral trade and economic ties has not been harnessed to an optimal level while some hurdles such as the us sanctions on iran are beyond control the bilateral relation of iran and pakistan is also suffering from some systemic issues which are turning chronic both our countries need to focus on these problems because in their presence the conventional methods of trade promotion for example webinar trade delegations and exhibition etc might not be at their desired level of success the bilateral trade systemic problem exist on both sides there are some tariff issues but they mainly comprise of non tariff barriers and slow progress of implementation of the decisions taken at various diplomatic forums for example joint economic commission joint trade committee and joint border trade committee we are actively following up with our iranian counterparts to hold 21st joint economic commission and 9th joint trade committee sessions whereas 8th session of the joint border trade committee has already been held and several issues including the issue of carnegie passage and extension of customs working on pakistan have been resolved in the implementation of the decision of these bilateral forums are hidden the solution to the systemic problems i was referring to now coming to specifically the pharmaceutical sector i would just uh, highlight some facts about uh, the pharmaceutical uh, industry of pakistan uh, just to familiarize my iranian guests for that Uh, pakistan uh, has 759 manufacturing uh, units uh, including 25 uh, multinational companies uh, they are manufacturing pharmaceutical products to the international standards they meet about uh, 70% of country's demand uh, of finished medicines domestic pharma market uh, share is evenly divided between national and multinational company pharmaceutical industry in pakistan contributes over 1.6 billion to pakistan gdp and pakistan has eight largest pharma uh, manufacturing industry in the world with 40 biotechnology companies this sector is the most developed high tech manufacturing sector in pakistan and uh, the some of the strengths are uh, we can attract iranian and pharmaceutical uh sector are that pakistan has huge domestic market over 220 million population and uh, having a dynamic uh, pharmaceutical industry which is witnessing uh, export growth uh, in year 2020 pakistan exported over 235 million worth of uh, medicines to uh, uh, about 16 countries of the world and uh, pakistan is having uh, since the industry is thriving so pakistan is having skilled uh, labor and cheap machinery due to government policies which offers uh, some concessions of duties and taxes on import of plants and machinery and capital goods for this industry and uh, industry is mostly is uh, iso certified and additionally herbal medicines are also in production and demand in pakistan so keeping in view these uh, facts uh, and uh, figures and statistics uh, i consider that joint ventures uh, after evaluating each other's strengths uh, for example uh, uh, in iran the energy and transportation cost is very low as compared to pakistan so pakistani uh, manufacturers of medicine can uh, consider uh, having joint ventures in iran free zones or uh, uh, similarly iran is manufacturing uh, active pharmaceutical ingredients which pakistani uh, companies can uh, procure from here and similarly vice versa iran can because due to sanctions iranian companies are unable to uh, 
uh, you see harness the full potential of their pharmaceutical sector so a good alt uh, um, a good incentive for them can be that if they have joint venture with pakistani companies in pakistan so it will be difficult to have to receive and send money from pakistan uh, because the banking channel issue will not come over there uh with this i would request my uh, pakistani speakers uh, mr um, najmuddin jawa and mr tokir hasan uh, primarily uh, since they are technical people they might uh, share uh, some technicalities and further prospects and uh, potentials of pakistani pharmaceutical industries that can um, uh, interest iranian uh, uh, audience uh, so that was uh, all on my part over to you uh, khanam thank you Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Ahmed. Um, so you were mostly focusing on more practical issues and uh, the problematic ones as well. Uh, so he uh, highlighted mostly on uh, the uh, status quo of Pakistani uh, companies active in pharmaceutical uh, industry and how Iranian and Pakistani companies can uh, make joint ventures. Um, and uh, he also uh, pointed out about the uh, low uh, prices of um, transportation in Iran and how we can have the procurement of pharmaceutical ingredients from um, our Pakistani uh, friends and the companies active in Pakistan. Um, thank you very much uh, for, the, for our esteemed uh, audience. If there are any questions, please just write your questions. Uh, your questions will be addressed uh, in the Q&A sector. Thank you. So our next uh, speaker would be Mr. Halaj. He's the Deputy for International Affairs of Tehran Chamber of Commerce. And um, hello and welcome, Mr. Halaj. Hello, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Sure, yeah, I can. Okay, good morning, everyone. Oh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, First of all, uh, on behalf of Tehran Chamber of Commerce and myself, I would like to express my greetings and thank His Excellency Mr. Nurian, the Honorable Consul General of Iran in Karachi, uh, Mr. Ahmad Masood, the Honorable Trade and Investment Counselor of Pakistan in Tehran for their remarks and welcome distinguished guests and all attendees to this webinar. Uh, as our previous speakers just mentioned, uh, there is a wide array of capacities in the field of pharmaceutical of the two countries by considering the two billion US dollar worth of the Pakistan pharma market. Uh, here we decided to provide an opportunity for businesses to raise their awareness of this market and to expand cooperation on the basis of mutual benefits. Uh, we are very aware that Iran has huge potential in exporting medicines in many fields such as treatment of MS, uh, anti-cancer medicines, uh, supplements and active pharmaceutical ingredients or APIs, which right now Pakistan imports some of them from India or China that would lead to higher prices for end users. Uh, I would like to recommend you our products as uh, they enjoy high quality standards aligned with attractive prices. Uh, we also are able to set up joint venture, as just Mr. Masood mentioned, in manufacturing products in this field for re-exporting to regional and international markets. Uh, there are also some difficulties on the way of doing businesses in this sector, including challenges in registering a pharmaceutical company in Pakistan, requesting so many documents uh, from Iranian companies, while other countries like India request less documents from our companies compared to Pakistan. They also face with some financial issues associated with uh, transferring money or the absence of a great relationship exists between the two size business people. So Tehran Chamber of Commerce stands ready uh, to support in all means uh, and to conduct negotiation with Pakistani counterparts for facilitating trade, solving the existing problems and concluding cooperation in all possible beneficial business areas. I believe with the cooperation of the embassy and the consulates of Iran in Pakistan, embassy of Pakistan in Tehran and other related associations that are participating in today's webinar, we would be able to provide new solutions for the existing challenges and to foster our partnerships. To achieve these goals, 
the continuous joint efforts of the active related associations are essential. As you are well aware, a joint committee was established between Pakistan Embassy in Tehran and Tehran Chamber of Commerce in December 2020 uh, with the aim of monitoring and facilitating the economic and trade relations. So any comments and ideas in the field of pharmaceutical relations also can be followed up through this committee. At the end, I would like to take this opportunity to once again express my regards to His Excellency Mr. Nurian and Ms. Ahmed and their colleagues and also my dear colleagues in Iran Virtual Expo Platform for their great efforts toward expanding cooperation between the two countries. And I wish success and blessing for all attendees today. Thank you. So thank you very much, Mr. Halaj, uh, for your remarks. Uh, Mr. Halaj uh, was trying to mention that the aim of this webinar is uh, to giving some insights to the trade people, both the Iranian and the Pakistani side, and how we can uh, address the challenges, uh, the exi existing challenges, um, uh, to follow up uh, these uh, issues uh, from the joint committee that has already been organized. I would, uh, before going to the next, uh, um, actually, guest, we are, uh, I would like to uh, welcome everyone, the, the people who has recently joined us as the audience. We've got at the moment over 100 people as the audience welcome. And uh, please uh, note that this session is being recorded from the beginning and will soon be available on YouTube and Apparat. At the same time, it is recorded and streamed on um, Iran Virtual Expo Instagram account. So uh, let's go over to our next um, uh, panel, panelist, Mr. Najim Al Hassan Jawab. He's the chairman of Pakistan Iran Business Council of Federation of Pakistan uh, Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Hello, good morning, and the floor is yours. Mr. Jawab, can you hear me? Um, Mr. Javai, if you're here, can you just respond so I know that you are in this session and we can listen to your speech? Actually, okay. could anyone tell me that if he's in the, in the room or not, should we go to our next? Madam Mutazel, I guess, uh, I guess that he's not in between the Oh, presenters, so yeah, but he's in the room, so we have to activate his access. Okay, so my colleagues, can you activate his access to this room as a speech giver? Can you please update me? Okay. I've just been informed that he's not in the room. Let's move on to our next uh, presenter. And if he joined us in the, in the middle of it, we will actually, he will be our uh, next um, panelist. So uh, Mr. Nariman Sadri, the CEO of Darman Ara Company. Hello, good morning, and welcome on board. Hello, good morning. Hello, morning. So let's make sure that so my voice clear now? Yes, I can hear your voice clearly. Okay, perfect. Thank you, we will listen to your presentation. Sure. So hello everybody, this is Naima Sadri. I'm a representative of uh, pharma industry in this webinar. Uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Moini Zandi will, uh, will also be part of the panel. And uh, he's the second uh, representative of our industry uh, discussing about part of the uh, dynamic of the market and a structure of Iran pharmaceutical market. Uh, so today I'm trying to focus on uh, an Iran pharmaceutical market, uh, giving you a little bit of taste of how it looks like and what are the opportunities there. 
So uh, in my presentation, I will, uh, I will cover uh, Iran demographic, the health industry indicators, a little bit about economic and health, uh, uh, and health uh, uh, industry structure. Then I will focus on pharmaceutical environment, also registration and reimbursement pathways. So Iran is your neighbor, uh, probably by, by now you, you heard a lot about uh, my country uh, at your uh, school time. Uh, it's a big country, the current population is uh, 85 million uh, uh, inhabitants. Uh, with almost uh, uh, low growth uh, compared to other uh, developing countries. It's only 1% uh, due to high urbanization. Uh, almost 75% of, of uh, my fellow Iranians are living in big cities. In the right high, uh, hand side of, the, uh, of, of, of my slide, you see the big cities uh, across Iran. Uh, those cities are... Uh, located uh, across very high mountains and you usually need to travel there uh, uh, either by, by car uh, spending hours and hours or uh, by flight. And we have uh, quite uh, developed uh, a logistic network uh, from, uh, from one city to another city. Uh, life expectancy is high. 76 just for you to have in comparison uh, between Iran and the other Eastern Mediterranean uh, countries and developing countries we are among uh, uh, among those countries with good uh, health indicators and having the high one of the highest life expectancy among developing countries uh, with uh, medium income level uh, structure uh, uh, also, if you take a look at the, uh, the other health indicators like infant mortality, mortality rate, which needs to be considered as one of the big ones uh, for, uh, for a country like Iran, you see that it is uh, only 10.9. Uh, unfortunately, my country uh, has been impacted gravely by, by COVID-19 and so far uh, very close to 100,000 people died. Uh, so here is a demographic uh, um, a pyramid. So if you look at the uh, pyramid of population, you see that we have a, almost a big base. So the kids and pediatric uh, population is growing. Uh, this is due to the uh, encouragement of the government to having, uh, uh, having more, uh, more breeding. Uh, also, it was some... In, uh, some incentive uh, scheme for the uh, for having more babies uh, uh, 30 years ago uh, 40 years ago at the time of our revolution and war with iraq this is why you have now in the middle of the pyramid uh, uh, another big portion uh, which is related to late young early mi uh, middle aged people what does it mean from from the health and pharmaceutical point of view it means that the, here there are opportunities for either uh, the, the growing population of pediatrics for solutions for pediatrics or for the middle uh, solutions for better quality of life and, uh, and uh, lifestyle products. Also at the top of the pyramid, we have an aging population that they need non-communicable disease like diabetes, cardiovascular and others uh, treatment. Uh, so just having a taste of uh, 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 of, of labor and uh, and gender uh, uh, gender rate, uh, you see that the literacy rate is high among ladies and gentlemen. So uh, um, on this we are we are among uh, uh, top countries uh, in our class, so middle income class. Uh, in the left hand side, you see that uh, also compared to uh, to Arab countries which is like the population located in our region, we have cheaper uh, labor force. However, it's not comparison to Pakistan, comparative to Pakistan, which I assume should be, should be uh, uh, less expensive. 
for political environment, you know that we have a non-executive and executive part. The executive part uh, uh, oversee the government. Uh, 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 we are talking about government, parliament, municipality, all of them are elected. And we have a non-executive part, uh, uh, judiciary, military, and foreign affairs that are reporting uh, to, to supreme leader. Uh, from the international trade limitations point of view, which is going to be probably questions of several of you, uh, we have targeted uh, uh, part of the economy uh, uh, that uh, has been sanctioned by US and Israel in order to having some collapse in our economy. However, it doesn't happen thanks to our resistant economy. Uh, the number of Iranian officials embargoed on making trade uh, overseas, number of industries and equipment embargoed to be sold to Iran, the Central Bank of Iran sanctioned, also international trade with Iran limit to humanitarian goods like foods and medicinal products. Uh, in, in coming slides, I will highlight more that how we Iranian traders and business people deal with these international trade limitations in order to make sure that we have supply of essential goods uh, to our people. Um, of course, we have a very big size of government. Uh, it's, uh, this is why the, their presence in the, uh, in the financial sector and manufacturing is noticeable. Uh, we are not part of the WTO. This is why uh, we, we may have non-tariff barriers. So sometimes our government puts uh, strict barriers on importation of, uh, of different products. Uh, and uh, we may have the, the risk of breaching intellectual property rights when it comes to the, uh, to the international uh, environment. But however, we have a very advanced uh, a local uh, intellectual property right that if any um, foreign business people wants to uh, do business with Iran or inside Iran, there is opportunity to secure your intellectual property uh, uh, with our advanced local uh, domestic rules. Uh, of course, uh, it's now years that we, we are following a resi uh, resilient economy. It means that we are supporting our domestic production. Uh, of course, the, the economy is, is super big. We are the, we, the second country in the world in terms of natural gas reservoir, fourth in terms of uh, proven crude oil reservoir. Uh, we have the second largest population among MENA region uh, uh, countries after Egypt. And uh, we are the third biggest economy in Middle East uh, uh, and in MENA region after uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, United Arab Emirates. A little bit about uh, economic indicators. Of course, recently after the, um, uh, uh, after the, uh, the, um, uh, the more push from the US side in order to have our economy collapse, we had a little bit of decrease in the size of economy. Uh, however, still remains big in, in it's estimated that, that our landing in 2020 was around 410 uh, uh, billion uh, US dollar. Uh, the GDP annual growth uh, was minus 4.7, uh, but it's estimated that in 2021 we may have uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, rebound and have, uh, have some growth. Uh, inflation rate is high. Uh, we are among high inflation rate uh, uh, countries. Uh, uh, this is mainly due to uh, due to the limitation of trades with with other uh, countries and having effect of the turbulence effect of the uh, of these sanctions within our uh, our structure. Um, however, the, uh, what with with all the, uh, the the negative aspects of economy, we we uh, maintain uh, our health expenditure high uh, among uh, middle income countries. It's as high as. Uh, 454, uh, uh, 475 now uh, after uh, uh, after COVID uh, uh, per capita. Um, so just deep dive a little bit on, on GDP composition. Uh, of course, like other uh, other big countries, almost half of our uh, GDP comes from service. Why I'm highlighting here because 
for you to know, however, Iran is among uh, uh, oil countries, what they call it, uh, countries that are dependent to oil, but by years, we managed to advance our industry. Among them, pharmaceutical and biotechnology industries are one of the uh, high gross ones in order to make sure that we are uh, less dependent to oil and gas and all the natural reservoir we have. And now we are more and more industrialized to make sure that we have other source of incomes. But let's, let's talk about health, which is the topic of today. Uh, uh, the current health expenditure as percentage of GDP is as high as 8.6% of GDP. Uh, from which almost 10% uh, of the total uh, of the health expenditure is uh, uh, spent on, uh, on pharmaceutical. Um, and it, it um, forecasted to be, to be increased in, in years to come. Uh, pharmaceutic, pharmaceutical market is, uh, uh, is a big market, uh, uh, saying that it's subsidized by the government, so is as high as, uh, uh, as uh, uh, almost 5.5 billion euro, from which 4 million euro almost is uh, a locally manufactured product and 1.5 million euro is uh, import products. So if we look at the left, uh, left side of my slides and visual, you see that almost 70% of the total value of pharmaceutical comes from a locally manufactured product and only 30 percent comes from importation from big multinational companies but if you take a look at the right hand side you see that only four percent of the total volume comes from the import so what does it mean it means that iran is uh, have the full independency when it comes to essential products you name it antibiotics all the pills for uh, for non-communicable disease even sophisticated biologic products. But when it comes to orphan drugs and only insulin probably among the ordinary uh, products, we are very much dependent to, uh, to importation. Um, the registration of product is quite straightforward, but you need to consider that Iran is a regulated country when it comes to registration of pharmaceutical products. We al always reference highly regulated countries like FDA, EMEA, or, or sometimes Australia, Japan for registering uh, neomolecules. Uh, there are two big steps for registering neomolecules. First uh, step is registering the, the neomolecule in pharmacopoeia, what we call it Iran drug list, and then registering the brand, and we have two pathways one for chemical products, the other one for biologic products. And then you obtain the, like a brand registration, which we call it Iran registration code, and you start to import the product inside the country, if you wish to export to Iran. Uh, of course, for the biologic product is a little bit more complex, and uh, uh, you need to have uh, GMP, you need to be referenced with, uh, with big countries, you, you need to have a full complete C, uh, CTD that is uh, uh, fully evaluated in the registration committee. For chemical products, it depends that if we are in need of that product or Iran is not in need. If we are in need of, of a product like what happened around COVID-19, for instance, we were in need of remdesivir or, or, or favipiravir a year ago. Now we are uh, manufacturing locally both products. Uh, but at that time, they, they provide us very quick registration path, which take less than three months and we register the product. But if you have a Me Too, you have a product that already registered in Iran and manufactured by several uh, manufacturing companies, it may take you as long as three years to, to, to register your product. Also for Iran drug list, if it is a new molecule, it is an innovative molecule, comes usually from multinational companies. Uh, they, need to, they need to first uh, show that it's a clinically proven product and molecule, 
and then they need to pass pharmacoeconomic study as well. So due to the fact that Iranian government is the biggest payer for pharmaceutical market, they make sure that if they register a product, they have enough budget to buy it because they buy the product for the patients. We have kind of a universal uh, reimbursement system that cover almost 100% of the people. This is why the economy is important that and a new mulkul and the pricing needs to show that they have a benefit for the nation. Uh, from the reimbursement point of view, uh, as I said, so almost all the Iranians are reimbursed uh, using different disciplines, half of them by government, uh, almost uh, for the, the re from the remaining 80% comes from the social security organization, which means that the employer and employee have contribution in the fund, and of course the priest people and villagers and tribes uh, covered by another big uh, insurance uh, system which comes from the charity activities and of course we have private sectors and private additional complementary insurance system as well so if you if you look at the big companies multinational companies that sell to iran you see that almost 45 percent of the total import to iran comes from top 20 pharmaceutical uh, companies in the world so almost uh, a quarter of that comes from Sanofi, another quarter comes from Novo Nordisk, and you name it, all the big players having a part of this pie. So why? Because Iran pharmaceutical industry is as advanced that we are able to manufacture usually all the essential products and even some biologic products, so we are not in need to import such basics. And when it comes to orphan drugs, and when it comes only to insulin, which you see Sanofi and Novo Nordisk has high shares, we are in need uh, to have importation. This is why uh, they have big shares. And usually the other players in, uh, in the world uh, don't have a say in Iranian market. So we import usually from Europeans. We export to other countries. We have big export to Germany. Uh, this is mainly uh, blood derivative products. We, we uh, export plasma uh, to Germany, then doing a fractionation there and then uh, re-import the product to the country. Uh, we are uh, se uh, selling uh, biologic products to Russia. And of course, all the neighbor brotherhood uh, companies, uh, countries, we have, uh, we have very close ties with them, including uh, our brothers in Pakistan and uh, we try to 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 sell uh, uh, all the essential finished products or api that we manufacture uh, to them and i hope that this webinar helps us to open new doors to doing bilateral businesses just a very quick glance on the uh, market structure 150 importers uh, Eighty percent of the total market comes from the top twelve companies, and also we have one hundred seventy domestic manufacturers. Of, of course, top twenty are big mega factories. Then the rest, one hundred fifty, are small workshops. They are not that big, because Iran is is super big country. Uh, we have using national top distributors in order to make sure that our products arrive to every single village and these top uh, distribution set up uh, make sure that the logistic works uh, uh, flawlessly and most of these big uh, big uh, distributors have branches in 31 provinces uh, exist in iran in the capital of province also but also in all the big uh, uh, all the big uh, uh, cities uh, one of the key success factors of Iran enabling us to having quite high-level healthcare system is the governance. Um, in every single province, we have medical university, one medical university, and the president of uh, uh, medical university acts as a health governor for that province. And they have dedicated budget to make sure that the primary care happens on the spot in the village or in the small city 
to make sure that we have service across the country. Of course, when it comes to the point of sales, we have hospitals, private pharmacies, and referral pharmacies uh, across the country. Referral pharmacies are those big pharmacies in big cities, making sure that the specialized medicine will be at disposal of patients uh, uh, in, in, the, in the big cities uh, with the full coverage of insurance. Another uh, uh, advanced uh, um, pharmaceutical sector in Iran is active pharmaceutical ingredients market and players. Uh, the market is, uh, is, is, is quite significant and it's growing because based on the resilience economy philosophy, uh, we are trying now to make sure that if uh, making a, an API locally makes sense economically, uh, we, 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 we manufactured it locally. We have big pl players, private and governmentals. Here, I, I learned from, uh, uh, from the Excellency, the Consular, that uh, uh, our partners in Pakistan may, uh, may have some interest on, on knowing the API producers. So here is the website address of the syndicate of uh, API producer in Iran. You can find uh, additional complementary information there. But uh, for all the biologic products, when we are doing manufacturing, we start from cell line. So if we sell a finished product uh, biologic, we have the cell line, we have the know-how of the upstream as well. When it comes to chemical products, it's different from one to another. Almost 40% of the molecules uh, uh, locally manufactures, 40% of the consumed and manufactured finished products, um, and 60% uh, and imported mainly from China and also India. So this is a little bit about the API. So there are export and import opportunities. It, it depends where, you, uh, where your business is located and uh, what is your segment and what is your value and know-how. Dr. Sadri, I'm sorry, but can you just make the conclusion a bit earlier? This is the, the last. This is Thank the last. You. Yeah. So either you can focus on li unlicensed uh, wholesaler export to Iran, when it, when it comes to the shortage list, or if you have a product that become suddenly in need, or you can have franchise partnership with Iranian companies, either for import or export. This is what I recommend more, because uh, the know-how of the big government in Iran and the know-how of a non-regulated probably uh, system there may become uh, may, may 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 will make the ease of uh, doing business not that uh, that that flawless this is why probably having the partner across the border will help us also licensing for production makes sense having a, a, a very much uh, a free capacity in our manufacturing sites so by this i close and i would be happy to answer to uh, questions uh, and you can write in the chat box or at the end of the session and here are my email and the address of the company. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Sadri, for your very insightful presentation. I'm sure those people interested in doing business in, with Iran and with Pakistan in pharmaceutical uh, industry would benefit from it. I, I would actually suggest them to go over the recorded video of this webinar and just um, note the points that Dr. Sadri has uh, pointed out during his presentation. Uh, he gave lots of statistics and details and technical uh, information uh, and uh, he also offered uh, the models of uh, cooperation that Iranian and Pakistani companies can uh, have together. So um, let's go over to uh, Mr. Najam Al Hassan Jawad, the chairman of Pakistan Iran Business Council of Federation of um, Pakistan Chambers of Commerce and Industry. So, hello, sir. Hello, hello. Can you hear me, Naid? I can hear you, but your voice is a little bit weak. Okay, what about now? Um, I didn't realize any change. How, can you speak? Hello. Um, can you hear me now? I can hear you a little bit better than before, but 
Okay, just... now what about now? Okay, I think it's fine now. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the Iran Chamber and Mr. Masood from Pakistan High Commission. Oh, they did a lot of effort to make it happen. Uh, all the major players in Pakistan, I think more than 100 uh, Pakistani manufacturers are on the link. And this shows the interest, how, in, how interested Pakistani people are in working with Iran. Not only the allopathic manufacturers, but the herbal and the homeopathic manufacturers are also there. So starting with my regular uh, f um, deliberation, first of all, I would go for uh, the Pakistan demographic, demographic features. The next slide, please. Uh, OK. Uh, Pakistan, uh, as you know, is a very big country. I think it has four times population than Iran. Area is not bad, that big, but population is very good. But <clears throat> the main important thing is that the growth in the economy, the middle class is growing as well, so is the healthcare awareness. Previously, the uh, people were not that aware about their health. As the middle class is growing, so is the demand. So uh, Pakistan has grown twice in the volume in just nine years, uh, as compared to Iran has not gone that far. Next slide, please. Uh, Okay, I'll, I'll carry on. Uh, I think there's some issue in the slides. Then Pakistan, has a, like Iran, Pakistan also has a very vibrant population. The most of it is the next slide, the next slide. The most of them are in the middle ages. The young age population is very high. <clears throat> now coming to the purpose of this webinar, the, it is to explore the opportunities between Iran and Pakistan in pharmaceutical sector including allopathic, herbal, nutraceutical, and homeopathic medicine, and to strive a bridge in between Tehran Chamber through Pakistan Embassy and FPCCI for business speciality in pharma sector. And then I'll uh, give you a small brief about the Pakistan pharma market. Total pharma market is 3.2 billion US dollars, and there are about 750 active manufacturers. I'm talking of allopathic only. The sector is creating 240,000 jobs to meet 80% of the country's demand. Pakistan is very rapidly growing in export of pharmaceuticals. At right now, it is exporting 218 million worth of US dollar, <coughs> which is point, approximately 1% of Pakistan's total export. Pakistan export to other countries in health sectors like surgical instruments, medical equipment is US dollar half a billion and is ranked 12th in uh, world's export with pharmaceutical ranking 22nd in the world. <clears throat> I will differ a bit on the figures provided with Mr. Masood. The total pharma, the, it was long time back that multinational used to produce 60% of the market share. Right now, the market share of the multinational has shrunk to 31% and rest 69% is spread with the local industry, which is growing very vibrantly. Uh, the <clears throat> If you could show the next slide, there are the figures which are showing that about 71% of the demand is met by, uh, in, in the present year, to 70% of, 71% is met by the local country uh, companies and 29% by the multinational company. <clears throat> If we talk of the pharmaceutical market in Pakistan, I've attached a list of top 20 companies. They include both national and multinational companies. <clears throat> and there are certain figures which are showing that uh, what is the share of top 25, top 50, and top 100 companies in Pakistan. Now, the most important part of the presentation is that uh, what is the... <clears throat> scope of uh, business between Pakistan and Iran. <clears throat> we'll talk about the opportunities. Pakistan pharmaceutical industry focuses mainly on copying invented drugs, focus on mainly generating blockbuster drugs and branded generics or the drugs gone off patent. Here's the interesting thing that it's a situation quite similar to Iran. We are also going for so many <clears throat> new molecules. So there's 
always influx of new and new products in the market, which is leading to growth in the market. <clears throat> Okay, I think I think yeah, we've we no missed him. There's there's no electricity there, I guess. Do you think we have to move on to our next presenter? Yes, yes please. Okay. So so we'll have Mr. Uh, okay, Mr. Takir uh Takir Al Haq. Uh, he's the president of Pharmaceutical Association of Pakistan. Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you well. Okay, and I, my video is uh, there. Okay, I'm uh, maybe a bit louder, sir. Okay, just a minute. Can you hear me now? Uh, I think it's a little bit better. Thank you. Yes, let's start with your presentation. So. Uh, on behalf of uh, Pakistan Pharmaceutical Manufacturers Association, I would like to welcome you all. And first of all, I would like to appreciate the invitation extended to me by the Tehran Chamber of Commerce, FPCCI, and the Embassy of Pakistan in Iran to share my views on this forum. I would like to applaud this initiative of collaboration between the organizing parties for strengthening the business relationship between both the countries and to arrange this valuable and informative webinar today. As already explained by Mr. Java, the pharmaceutical export of Pakistan is around 210 million US dollar with a growth of 9.4% in contrast to the local market valued at 3.1 billion uh, in 2019. Uh, Pakistani pharma export has the potential to reach more than 2 billion considering the opportunities available in the market. Pakistan is exporting to many countries, especially in ASEAN, African region and, and uh, Central Asia. But we are continuously exploring new avenues to increase the presence of Pakistan medicines in different parts of the world. The potential of Pakistan pharmaceutical export market is much higher than ob obtained at this point in time because we have a focused exporting uh, opportunity of 74.3 billion. And at this point in time, we are serving only in the market of 12.95 billion that shows there is a huge potential for us to explore for export. Now, the good thing is that Pakistan government has a great uh, uh, you know, indication and uh, vision and strategies to expand export. And in view of our recent discussions with the Prime Minister of Pakistan, his vision is also to see pharmaceutical sector expanding its growth through export. So that is a great opportunity for pharmaceutical industry in Pakistan to explore, identify, and expand businesses outside Pakistan with a greater vision of the government because they will also be incentivizing and giving opportunities and the policies will be in a way that that will help boosting export of Pakistan medicines out in, outside other countries. The Pakistan government also envisioned to enhance the enhancement in export and putting the special focus on the expansion of export operation by pharma companies, as I have already told you. Uh, the government of Pakistan further uh, acknowledges uh, 
just a minute. Can you see my picture? Furthermore, the drug regulatory of Pakistan is also implementing strong, strong control for the improvement of manufacturing operations and evolution in the process. Pakistani pharmaceutical companies are putting special emphasis on producing quality medicines to serve not only the local market, but the international markets as well. We are extensively working to promote increased sophistication in our manufacturing processes and compliance as per the international standards. With a strong quality proposition and continuous investment in the sophistication of the manufacturing processes, we are eager to collaborate with the Iranian government and business community for providing medicines and therapies across borders. Here, I would like to suggest few steps to substantially increase the trade between our countries in terms of pharmaceutical products. Those are number one, Pakistan should be included in the list of preferred countries. Then the second step is that bioequivalent studies should be exempted as per the WHO's waiver framework on certain drugs, for example, like eye drops, ear drops, and dermatology products as well. Number three, the fast track processes of registration for pharmaceutical product. We should be given the opportunity to get our products registered on a fast track, which will encourage the local industry to you know, see their, their products in Iran. Then the fourth step is that subsidies in registration fee will also motivate many companies to look for opportunities in Iran. Next is the sharing of data, like the list of information related to distributors and manufacturing companies in Iran and Pakistan. Here, I would like to suggest that uh, the first step is to, you know, arrange trade delegation between both the countries, like uh, our major exporting pharmaceutical delegation should visit Iran and the Iranian government should provide an opportunity and ease of, you know, having this trade, trade delegation so that we can come there and we should meet uh, the potential partners in Iran and as well as we should meet govern, government, government officials and regulatory authorities to, to discuss our issues and to get their uh, uh, you know, help in getting our process of registration at a faster pace. Then a promotion of joint ventures and MOUs between manufacturers on both sides of the border. That is another step that we should look into that, that joint ventures, for example, for APIs and vaccines, where vaccines is the need of the art. So we can have joint venture between the two uh, countries as well. So potential is there, but the only the one problem which our companies are facing there, that direct business from Iran is very difficult and uh, due to sanctions and uh, until and unless uh, we are able to you know have our access directly it is becoming very difficult and banking channels are also an issue for example issuance of form e by bank in pakistan you know this is an issue so we have to look into this fact that how ably and uh, uh, smoothly uh, we can you know uh, enter in Iran with our you know, pharmaceutical products. So the procedures and the impediments have to be you know, taken care of uh, us, both from Pakistan government, Iranian government, regulatory authorities. So this is the first step that we should have confidence that we know that there is a huge potential of export from both sides. Iranian products can come to Pakistan and our products can go to you know, uh, like, for example, APIs and vaccines, and we can also, we are manufacturing state-of-the-art uh, pharmaceutical products, and we, we are competing so well in our neighboring countries, and our leading uh, pharmaceutical companies are, you know, having a great presence outside Pakistan, uh, in South, uh, for example, in uh, Vietnam and Philippines and Central uh, Asia. So uh, in Sri Lanka, also in Afghanistan. So Iran should be our next destination to see our products there as well. 
So finally, uh, you know, I would, uh, as a chairman of PPMA, uh, I would uh, like to ensure that pharmaceutical industry is all set to improve the quality proposition of the medicines we offer. Also, we are working closely with Drug Regulatory Authority of Pakistan and TDAP to enhance the SOPs and practices to serve the patients in a better and effective way. We are ready to discuss the suggestions presented here and looking at the possibility of effectively implementing them. So on behalf of pharmaceutical industry of Pakistan, I will say that we are very delighted to see the steps taken by the regulatory bodies of Iran to enhance the collaboration between both countries. And we are all geared up to welcome the initiative by exploiting, uh, sorry, by exploring the options of the increased presence of our products in Iran and the possibility of being engaged in contract manufacturing and joint ventures with pharmaceutical companies there. This webinar, I'm sure it will provide and will, will prove to be a stepping stone in our approach to enter the Iranian market with high quality products. I would like to acknowledge the untiring efforts of all the stakeholders for arranging this webinar. And we are looking forward to working together to promote a pharma export be between our countries, which will prove to be a productive and value adding collaboration. I extend uh, my utmost gratitude towards all the speakers today for sparing time to give valuable information about processes and possible ways to increase the trading relationship with Iran. And I'm sure that today's session will be a great learning experience for everyone and will help us in paving the way for the greater benefit of both the countries. Thank you very much and good luck to us and we would you know like to see that we are able to proceed further in terms of expanding our business relationship between both the countries thank you very much thank you very much mr tarik al haq and we all also hope that uh, we can promote the collaboration between iran and pakistan even further and uh, just a quick question mr tarik can you please uh, provide our audience with uh, an email address and a website so they can uh, have uh, just explore the website and have further information about uh, your suggestion as well as the opportunities available for Iranian companies. Okay, I'm just uh, on the chat. I'm uh, sharing my email address. I have already Brilliant. shared my uh, business card as well, but I'm sharing my email address. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Welcome. So, um, okay. So, Mr. Tariq Al Haq. Uh, uh, the president of Pharmaceutical Association of Pakistan. He was just uh, talking about the potentials of collaboration between Iranian and Pakistani companies and uh, the steps that we need to look into in order to even further promote uh, such collaboration. And uh, thank you very much. I, we will go back actually to Mr. Najam's yeah. presentation. We actually lost him in the middle of his presentation. We will have the rest of your presentation. Mr. Najam, the floor is yours. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you well. Okay. I'm very extremely very sorry to all because there were some electrical problems and we got disconnected. I'll keeping it uh, very short. I'll. Uh, uh, Quite some API manufacturers in Iran. Whereas Pakistan is importing most of its uh, products from uh, India and China, but the problem working with uh, India is that uh, often there are uh, disturbances on the border which affect the businesses. So it's an excellent opportunity for Iranian companies who can come forward and take the uh, uh, and bridge the gap and get uh, quite some handsome business for that. Uh, you, you have shared, uh, Mr. Murad and uh, Mr. Sadri has shared the uh, web link of uh, syndicate of uh, active manufacturing. We'll go for that. 
slide. Because right. Pakistan pharmaceutical industry focuses mainly on copying invent inventors drug focusing on mainly early generation blockbuster drug and branded generics or drug grown off patent. So you can uh, communicate this information to us. Leading firms are now focused on more profitable biologicals along with speciality drugs for cancer, neurological, and physiological disorders that have limited generic equivalents called biosimilars. The, the biopharmaceutical sector, vaccine, therapeutics, and diagnostics can also become an important growth driver. In Pakistan, the pharma industry can focus in below segments for business with Iran. So it means that we can import active pharmaceutical ingredients, APIs, diagnostic medical devices, diagnostic kits, specialized products, prefilled syringes, catheters, etc. Whereas from Pakistan, we can export homeopathic medicine, nutraceutical and herbal products, cosmeceutical, etc. As uh, there, there is demand for many uh, homeopathic medicines, and they are mostly for, imported from Europe. You can from Pakistan, you can supply many of them. And you can uh, contact us for that. Now I'll focus on why in the past years lots of efforts have been made from both sides, exchange of delegation from uh, both sides, and there were lots of effort done by the diplomatic missions on both sides. But till now we cannot have uh, any breakthrough, major breakthrough in the pharma business. Of course, the first reason is the uh, the the problem of the banking channel because non-existence of the banking channel people are very hesitant and don't know how to do the business in that regard pakistan uh, iran business council can guide the ways how can the things be sorted out plus in pakistan there's a misconception that apis are sanctioned drugs which are actually not so by promoting these things and bringing uh, more knowledge about the iranian products in pakistan can give a kickstart and a very big boost to the uh, uh, business between Pakistan and might be the second biggest sector after energy if promoted properly in the pharmaceutical sector. Then there will be my suggestion that Tehran Chamber with Pakistan Embassy and FPCC should work together. Then either uh, you, the Tehran Chamber or the Syndicate of the Pharmaceutical Manufacturers in Iran should have a series of seminars in Karachi, Lahore, Islamabad and Peshawar show displaying their products or, or on sending the samples and FPCCI can help them. Exchange of delegation, of course. And the most important thing, FDA, Iran and DRAP, Pakistan should have collaborative role. As Mr. Taki was mentioning that there are certain things which can bypass, for instance, if a draft delegation is invited to Iran and FDA delegation is invited to Pakistan. They should see the inspection system and avoid the duplication of the things so that things can move swiftly. <clears throat> then uh, the confidence building initiative. The most important thing as uh, Mr. Sadri was also mentioned that Iran must have an authorized sole agent in Pakistan because local industrial knowledge and sentiment is very important. And the authorized agent should know a thorough knowledge of Pakistani pharma market, a strong network within the country, have offices in all major cities in Pakistan. Pakistan Iran Business Council can FCC can help Iranian companies in this regard. Previously, what is what has been happening that anyone going popping in into Iran and visiting Iranian pharmaceutical companies has been appointed as an agent without knowing that his strengths in the pharmaceutical sector. So I would suggest that you should, uh, if you want to get success, the Iranian API, biosimilar, diagnostic, and other people who are interested into Pakistani market. If you want to really enter into the Pakistan market, you should look for a focal person or authorized agent in Pakistan who can do the job, visiting or uh, communication through emails, uh, won't be uh, very much effective. You need to have a, a, a permanent presence here. <clears throat> Hopefully, I will be in Tehran from uh, 22nd to 27th of this month. I have plans to visit the Iran farm so that when I'm there, I can also meet the people and the people who are interested in working in Pakistan. We, I can also devise the uh, ways and methods how we can improve the business. 
also uh, we can uh, help you uh, uh, diagnose how you can appoint an agent here and the regulatory requirements also what are the regulatory requirements the easier if talking of easier to difficult APAs are most uh, easier to be entered into Pakistan market and biological are the most difficult API for APAs it, it can enter into three to four months whereas biological it may take two to three years to enter whereas finished products are not very much in demand but specialized products which are not manufactured in Pakistan may take up to two years to enter into the Pakistan market. Whereas uh, if you have some herbal products or other uh, products, they can be done in three to four months or so. Uh, also, I would like to stress on Iranian companies to look into the Pakistan products like biological, uh, the pharmaceutical products which are not manufactured in Iran and are imported from Europe and other countries. Pakistan is also having very advanced uh, GMP system. And we can connect you to the big companies. Also, you can look into the alternate medicine sector, just like uh, uh, homeopathic herbal. And above all, we can uh, work a lot on the surgical products and the surgical disposable, especially the cotton and the uh, bandages sector, and uh, which is very strong because Pakistan is very strong in textiles. It can also produce the surgical disposable at a very good economical quality. So you, the people who are interested in the in these sectors can also look into and Pakistan uh, Pakistan Business uh, Society, so Pakistan Iran Business Council will help Iranian people identify the right partners in this regard. But again, in the last, I will stress that if you want to enter into the Pakistan market, you should have a reliable partner and Pakistan Iran Business Council, the all the councillors of Iran in Pakistan and Pakistan Embassy in Tehran. They are all, all there to help you along with the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Tehran Chamber of Commerce, Iran Chamber of Commerce, Mashhad. We are in contact with Khorasan Chamber, Shiraz Chamber, Isfahan Chamber. All the inquiries coming through them to Pakistan Business Council are uh, replied very rapidly. Thank you very much. I had to say that if there's any question, you can put in the, um, you can type them in the um, chat box and we'll reply to them. Thank you, Mary, if you can continue the session. Thank you very much, Mr. Najam. Um, so actually what Mr. Najam was focusing on and uh, what was uh, highlighted was that you need to have a reliable partner if you want to facilitate your penetration into Pakistan's market. And uh, also another thing that if there's anyone interested in uh, receiving consultation from Mr. Najam, he will be in Tehran from 22nd uh, to 27th of August uh, and to meet with people and help them in uh, just receiving some further information, some further practical, more practical information uh, to collaborate with uh, Pakistan in the pharmaceutical uh, industry. So uh, thank you very much, Mr. Najam. And uh, if there are any questions, one more time, I will let you know that the questions will be addressed at, at the end of this um, session. And uh, also this video is being recorded. It'll, it will be um, uh, just uh, uploaded into YouTube for our foreign uh, audience and uh, on Apparat for our Iranian uh, audience. Also, I would like to let you know that Iran Virtual Expo is a platform for the companies of both uh, sides to just uh, explore the market of Iran. And if they're interested in doing any business, any, any B2B meetings, um, just uh, let us know. We will definitely help you find the best solution for your business penetration into um, Iran's market. So uh, let's uh, move on to our um next presenter dr mohandeli Razali. he is the chairman of the union of manufacturers and exporters of medical plants and food products um are you here mr Razai? dr Razai? hello salam salam welcome good morning uh, 
سلام از میکنم خدمت همه عزیزان و تشکر میکنم از تمام دستندرکاران که این وبینار رو ایجاد کردن وی آر پراب تو پارتیسیپیت این ایران پاکستان بیزنس وبینار آن فارماسیتیکل اندستری ویت آر کانتر پارتس فرام پاکستان ایران و پاکستان دو کشور همسایه که در قرون گذشته مشارکات تاریخی و روابط تجاری و سیاسی بسیار خوبی رو داشتند که امیدوار کننده بوده و در زمینه گیاهان داروی در دو کشور فعالیت های بسیار و سهم موفقی رو در بازارهای بین المللی داشتند Iran and Pakistan are two neighboring countries that have historical communities and trade and political relations over the past centuries. We hope to strengthen trade relations in the field of medicinal plants between the two countries so to have successful presence and share in the global market. Etihadiye sadir konandegan va tolid konandegan giyahan daruy Iran و زعفران ایران در سال 1966 بیش از 55 سال سابقه کاری در ایران را داره. The Union of Exporters of Medicinal Plants, Food Products and Saffron of Iran was established in 1966 and is affiliated to the Iranian Chamber of Commerce, Industries and Mines. <coughs> هدف این اتحادیه بهبود توسعه و تولید صادرات گیاهان داروی سمخار ریشه دانه های کشاورزی و زعفران هستش. The objective of the union is to improve and develop the production and export of medicinal plants, gums, plants fruits and agriculture seeds. این اتحادیه در حال حاضر بیش از 110 عضو فعال اعضا داره که پیشرو در تولید کش تولید و فراوری گیاهان دارویی هستند. The union currently has 110 active members. The members of the union are leading companies in the production and export of medicinal plants. Visit our website at uiem.org to learn about the companies and their products. همونطور که میدونین ما در جغرافیامون ایران از 13 اقلیم جغرافیایی حدود 11 اقلیم رو دارا هستش. ایران uh, has 11 of the 13 known climates in the world. The, the number of plants species in Iran is about 8000 species. تعداد گونه های گیاهی ایران بیش از 8000 گونه است که شاخص آن زعفران با بیش از تولید 95 درصد دنیا در ایران تولید میشه که تولید جهانی متعلق به ایرانه و عرض هم حضورتون که 25 درصد از اون مصرف داخل کشور و 75 درصد اون صادرات میشه The main producer of saffron is Iran uh, This year we have harvested about 450 tons of saffron 25% is used in for domestic market and 75% is exported. Iran بیش از 2200 گونه گیاهی کشور با خواص دارویی مبادتر و ادویجات را داراست که حدود 25 درصد اون مصرف داخلی میشه و الباقیش برای صادرات علاق داره. More than 2200 species of plants in the country have medicinal, aromatic, spice and cosmetic properties. با توجه به گونه تنوع گیاهان دارویی و ارزم حضورتون تولید در ایران 2300 گونه از گیاهان بومی ایران منحصر به ایران و انحصاری هستند. 2300 species of native plants of Iran are exclusive plants of Iran. پاکستان گیاهان غنی و متنوعی از تقریبا 5700 گونه برخورداره که 2000 گونه اون دارویی هستش. Pakistan is enjoying a rich and diverse plants of almost 5700 species of which around 2000 are reported to be medicinally important. این تنوع در گیاهان بومی پاکستان باعث شده با توجه به مناطق آب و هوایی و جغرافی پاکستان از مناطق خشک و نیمه خشک و معتدل 
و گرمسیری متغیر است. This diversity in Pakistan's native plants reflects its varied climatic zones and range from arid and semi arid to a temperate and tropical. الو صدای من داری؟ بله صدای تو می داری. جناب رضایی ما هم تصویر و هم صدای شما رو داریم. بله بسیار علی چون من تلفن متاسفانه لحظه قطع شد. خوش بفرمایید. گیاهان داری در جهان صنعت نوظهور در بخش گیاهان کشاورزی با متوسط رشد پنجاب و پنج حدود 5 ممیز 15 درصد هستش. Medicinal plants uh, is an emerging industry in the agricultural sector with an average annual growth of 5.15%. همونطور که میدونی حجم تجارت گیاهان داری در سال 2016 یه چیز بوده 12 میلیارد دلار بوده و در سال 2017 بیش از 150 میلیارد دلار. The trade volume of medicinal plants in 2016 was 120 billion US dollars. پیش بینی توسعه تجارت در سال 2025 بیش از 450 میلیارد دلار و توسعه در سال 2050 بیش از 5000 میلیارد دلار در جهان خواهد بود. The trade development forecast for 2025 is more than 450 billion US dollars and also in 2050 الو صدای ما دارین شما آقای رضایی صدای شما یه لحظه صدا و تصویرتون قطع شد ولی الان اوکیه بله ایران با توجه به تنوع گیاهان دارویی یه چیزی حدود 600 میلیون دلار صادرات صرفا رو گیاهان دارویی و زعفران رو در سال 20 داشته In 2020 Iran has exported medicinal plants about 600 million dollars. کشورهایی که بیشتر ایران صادر کرده چین، هند، مصر، آلمان، فرانسه، کشورهای عربی و ژاپن بوده. Uh, Iran is exporting medicinal plants to China, uh, UAE, Euro, uh, European countries, Japan. Pakistan and also India. با توجه به این آمار ما حدود نیم درصد از بازار جهانی رو ایران داره. پیش بینی ما اینه که با حالا با توجه به سانکشن هایی که داشتیم و فشار هایی که از نظر سیاسی برای روی ایران بوده پیش بینی میکنیم با گسترش این کار بتونیم در آینده نزدیک با یک برنامه رزی منظم بتونیم هدف تا ده درصد از این بازار جهانی رو کسب کنیم. Our vision is uh, we do to do attention to biodiversity of medicinal plants of Iran and Pakistan as well as increasing interest and demand of global market. We intend to have a leading role as main suppliers of medicinal plants in international market. Our vision is to gain 10% share of growing market of medicinal plants by developing the production, processing, packaging, and branding of medicinal plants. تجزیه روز افسون مصرف کننده های نسبت به گیاهان داری و عوارض جانبی کمتر نسبت به داروهای شیمیایی در مقایسه با سایر داروها در صورت مصرف طولانی مدت عوامل اصلی محرک بازار گیاهان دارویی هستند. علاوه بر این تغییر در شیوه زندگی و همگیری 
کووید 19 بر بازار گیاهان داروی تاثیر مثبتی گذاشته که ما در سال جاری صادراتمون حدود سی درصد و تولیدمون و مصرف اون حتی در کشور افزایش یافته در زمین گیاهان داروی The increasing consumers preference to our med towards uh, medicinal plants and the less side effects when compared to other forms of medicines are the major factors driving the medicinal herbs market. Additional, additional change in lifestyle and COVID-19 pandemic has positively affected the medicinal herbs market. Therefore, this year the export and domestic consumption, consumption of uh, با توجه به تنوع گیاهان دارو ایران و پاکستان و افزایش علاقه و تقاضاهای های بازار جهانی آمادگی اینو داریم نقش اصلی را به عنوان تأمین کنندگان اصلی گیاهان دارویی در بازارهای بین المللی به صورت مشترک داشته, داشته باشیم چشمنداز ما اینه که با توسعه تولید و فراوری و بسته‌بندی و علامتگذاری گیاهان دارویی بتونیم ده درصد از بازار رو به رشد گیاهان داروی جهانی را به دست آوریم. Uh, as I said before, uh, we uh, are going to uh, with your cooperation with Pakistan's counterparts to grow our production and export share of growing market, uh, growing market of medicinal plants. با توجه به سوابق این اتحادیه بیش از 55 سال و بیش از 110 عضو تولید کننده بزرگ کشور در زمینه تولید و صادرات گیاهان دارویی این اتحادیه آمادگی خود را جهت عضویت و همکاری با اتحادیه و انجمنهای پاکستان اعلام آمادگی خود را اعلام می‌کند. With due attention to the experience of this union and uh, the leading uh, producer of uh, medicinal plants of Iran, we are ready to uh, have members from your, uh, Pakistan and we hope that this will, uh, webinar will be a great starting point for our cooperation with Pakistani companies. Omid Varimi webinar نقطه شروع خوبی برای همکاری ما و کشور پاکستان باشه در خاتمه از اتاق بازرگانی شورای تجارت پاکستان سفارت محترم جمهوری اسلامی ایران در پاکستان و کلی عزیزانی که تلاش کردن برای ایجاد این سمینار تشکر می کنم. Uh, I would like to thank the Trade and Investment Council of Pakistan, Pak Iran Business Council, Tehran Chamber of Commerce and the Embassy of Iran in Pakistan and all the uh, members that we have Thank you very much, Dr. Rezaei. Your, your focus was uh, different from uh, other presenters uh, by focusing on uh, how the uh, pandemic has affected the um, preference of consumers and uh, their tendency to use further medicinal plants and um, medicinal drugs, actually uh, herbal drugs. And uh, you also um, suggested about uh, your readiness to supply medicinal plants jointly with Pakistani company to other countries. And also um, you are willing to cooperate with your counterparts from Pakistan. So uh, thank you for everyone. We've got the last presenter and then we'll go to our um, Q&A section. So we will have uh, Dr. Amir Hossein Moini. He is the board member of Iranian Dietary Supplementary Manufacturers Syndicate. Hello, Dr. Moini. Welcome. And we will listen to your presentation now. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I think your video is freezed. Hello. I think we've lost Dr. Moini. His video is freezed. 
Maybe it's his connection, Dr. Moini. Um, Dr. Moini, can you hear me? Okay, I think we've lost him. Okay, I think we've lost Dr. Uh, Moini. Um, in the meantime, until we have him back, there's a trailer on Iran Virtual Expo. I think it's good just to have a rest in the meantime and wait until Dr. Moini is back. Okay, so I think still we don't have Mr. Uh, Dr. Rezai, Dr. Mouini with us. In the meantime, um, among the panelists, the esteemed panelists, are there any points that you want to point out until we have Dr. Mouini back? Um, if yes, please, you're welcome to just um, make your note. Okay, I think everyone has presented everything and there's no other thing to add. So again, um, I'd like to welcome all the audience and thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, and uh, you can ask your questions if you've got any in the chat box. Uh, your questions will be responded um, right after our last presenter. And uh, could anyone let me know that if Dr. Moini is back, I think we still don't have him on this room. Okay. So, Madam Murtaza, I uh, yes, uh, Ms. Falahati, she would like to talk. She's from the Iran Pakistan Joint Chamber of Commerce. Uh, she can deliver Good. her speech and then. Whenever Mr. Mourinho joined us, we can ask him to uh, present the presentation. Sure, okay. So she's welcome to give her speech. Hello.
Madam, are you here? Yes. Okay, can you hear me? I hear you. I still don't okay. see your video, but I can hear you. Okay. Uh, I uh, didn't my. I don't see my picture. Uh, you see me or? No, I, unfortunately, no. I don't. I can't see your no. video. Ah, yes. Now he's active. Now he's active. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank Hello, you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is me, Nazanin uh, Falahati from uh, Iran and uh, Pakistan Chamber of Commerce. I'm a head of uh, health commission uh, in Iran and Pakistan in medical drugs. Uh, unfortunately, because of COVID, uh, we cannot uh, have a meeting with our uh, um, member in the Pakistan Chamber of Commerce, but uh, this is a very good meeting and uh, prepare from the uh, international department in the Chamber of Commerce of Iran, uh, Tehran, uh, Mr. Hallaj, and the uh, embassy consular in the Pakistan, uh, Mr. Ahmed and uh, Mr. Najam, and uh, 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 that's our uh, and uh, Mr. Nurian from Council of Iran, and uh, I'm appreciate uh, this meeting uh, for developing the business in the uh, field of uh, medical equipment and uh, in the field of drugs. And uh, we wish we have uh, another meeting in the medical equipment, especially uh, because uh, as uh, Mr. Nedam uh, presentation, uh, the mostly. Uh, mentioned in the uh, drugs uh, uh, and the subject uh, for this meeting is the drugs and uh, that I found uh, Pakistan uh, most uh, wants to export uh, to Iran and uh, although we have many manufacturing in Iran and there is a many potential in Iran too and uh, I would like uh, to um, uh, open this market uh, with together and uh, share our knowledge and the potential of the business together. Uh, but uh, in the medical equipment field, uh, we have many, many companies uh, in knowledge-based companies, innovator, and the high quality, and we can compete with China now with the price and the quality more than uh, better. But uh, uh, as you know, the uh, rate of Iran is uh, less than before. Uh, we can uh, supply and uh, prepare this medical equipment better than before. Uh, so uh, um, that's a very good meeting and it's open the market with together and uh, this meeting is the first and the uh, good step uh, for the starting the uh, business uh, from Iran and as me uh, mentioned in the uh, text uh, my uh, contact number and um, you can uh, be in touch with me and I would like to have a good uh, meeting from B2B meeting and uh, with uh, all uh, council uh, and all um, syndicate, uh, Mr. Tucker. Uh, I don't have your, your exact number. I didn't see your business card. And uh, Mr. Najam, uh, and we share uh, our uh, business partner together uh, from the B2B meeting, online B2B meeting in the next step. Uh, especially in every field uh, and every specific subject. And uh, me as a um, responsible from the Chamber of Commerce of Iran and Pakistan Commission, uh, I can arrange everything you want and uh, match all uh, distributor uh, together. Uh, thank you, thank you for this nice meeting and uh, have a good day all. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Falawasi, as well. Um, so I'm sure that you will be the uh, reliable um, focal point for those interested in doing business, especially in pharmaceutical with Iran from Pakistan. And uh, once again, I would like to thank you, the, thank the audience who uh, have joined us recently or who have been with us from the beginning of this session. Uh, this session is being recorded for your information and will be available on YouTube in a few days. So make sure that you go back to it to just uh, view the discussions again. So it would be a fruitful and useful uh, step for you to start a business, to penetrate into Pakistani market or uh, to make joint ventures as it was, as it was offered um, by our panelists.
Okay, so as uh, the last step, but not definitely the least, uh, we would go over to the questions and answers. I think we have missed uh, Dr. Moini. Uh, unfortunately, we've not been able to contact him again. Um, I think his connection is lost totally. Okay, let's go over to the question and answer. Um, please, if you've got any questions uh, from among the audience, please click on the bottom of the hand shape and uh, raise your hand to be connected uh, to, the, to the panelists that you are interested to ask a question from. So do we have anyone interested in asking questions from the audience? I think there has been a few questions written in the chat box, if anyone could provide me with them. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, hello. Can you please introduce yourself? Hi, yeah, hi, this is Mohammad Rahil, General Manager, Caliph Pharmaceutical from KPK Province, Pakistan. Okay, nice to talk to you. Uh, nice who to do you want to ask a question from so we can have him or her on board? Well, my question would be the Mr. Najam. Okay, Mr. Najam, are you there, there to yeah, reply I'm, I'm to I'm going to address him. Yes, please go on. I can, hear you. can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Okay, okay. Please go on. Sir? I think they have lost connection. No, no, sir. Yeah. I'm okay with you. Hello. Hello, can you, can you please? Go on with your question. Okay, can't we have the online one window registration process of the products and company for import and export purposes followed by the site inspection? Because usually it takes six months to one year and sometimes more. Hello, is that okay? Yes, we can hear you well. Actually, not now. Um, <clears throat> um, so, unfortunately, your connection is weak. But I think we got a glimpse of what you wanted to ask. It was about one window and how it can be facilitated and the timing proce procedures at the moment. Mr. Najam, have you got any answer to his question? And did you get his question? Um, Mr. Najam, I can't hear you. I think your mic is off. Yes, yes. Uh, can you I can see you, but I can't hear you, unfortunately. Can you hear now? A little Hello? bit better, but still we're very weak. No, I think it's okay. Can you hear now? Yes, it's fine. Thank you. Uh, it, it, it is a regulatory issue and it can't be done in one window or whether it's DRAP in Pakistan or it's FDA in Iran, whoever is to apply has to follow the procedure and we as a chamber or association can't help much in that. We have to follow the procedures. Could you hear me? Um, yes, I can. I could hear you actually, but you were talking about the regulatory thing that may not be done at one step. Uh, sir, did you get the answer to your question? Did you well, I did get the answer, okay. but that is the issue that most of the countries that we are exploring, not only in Middle Eastern countries, but from the Central Asian countries as well. That is the main issue that we are having problem at the moment that the registration process of the company's products and the company itself, uh, it takes um, 
sorry, but your connection is really weak. Okay, I think, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, but your connection is weak. Uh, shall we move on to our next audience who's got a question? Is there anyone asking? Hello. Hello. Okay. So Hello. Can you, you hear me? Yes, I can hear you well. Okay. So my name is, is Leila. I'm from. Yes, my name is Leila. I'm from uh, Iran, a mod pharmaceutical company. Okay. okay. And uh, we are a, a producer, the only producer of wound at the ones wound dressing in uh, in the Middle East. And and we are the third uh, company of third producer in the world. I have, uh, my question is about uh, the procedure of registration of this kind of dressing, advanced dressing. They are uh, made of uh, silver yarn and silver. Uh, it is uh, used for deep and open uh, wounds, I mean. And uh, is there any limitation for this kind of uh, products? And uh, if not, is uh, do you know if there is good market for this kind of products in Pakistan? Okay, thank you for your question. Um, is any of our esteemed panelists ready to give an answer to her question? Yes, uh, I, I would like to answer. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Brilliant. Thank you, Mr. Najan. Please go on. Uh, the, the information provided is very limited. We need to know more about the products. If, if you could send it by WhatsApp or email, then we can analyze and give you a detailed answer. Okay, okay can I have uh, the WhatsApp number? It, it's written, you, you can share my WhatsApp number with them. Madam Matosari, can you please share the business card of Mr. Najam on the screen? Okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay, thank you. Your contact details will be shared with her to get in touch with you, sir. Right, thank you very much. I'll, I'll reply as soon as I get the query. Thank you very much. Okay, our next question comes from... Is there any next questions? If you've got any questions, please uh, push on the button, like the hand, and raise your hand so our colleagues can have you on board. Okay, so in the meantime, there are a few questions. Uh, what are the import challenges if we want to import finished dosage from Iran? I think, Mr. Najim, can you provide any answers to this question? You mean that if, if we want to import finished dosage from Iran or to Iran? I could... uh, from Iran. Uh, Basically, again, as uh, Sadri told that Pakistan also looks into its needs. If the product is not abundantly available in Pakistan, the things are relatively easier. However, if it's abundantly available in Pakistan, then the procedures are a bit tight. You have to, you have to provide bioequivalent studies. You have to provide all the information required by draft their dossier, which we have to submit through some 
company who will be ready to import those products in Pakistan. All the things have to be done by Pakistani company. After getting uh, the required doc documents and submitting the required fees to the drug regulatory authority in Pakistan, the proceed they will start to analyze the, the dossiers and read through the technical information. Then they may have some queries in that that the manufacturer has to answer. After the things are cleared, <clears throat> there, there will be some panel of inspection for Pakistan because Iran has not been recognized by uh, the WHO certification or FDA certification. So our uh, at least two inspectors from Pakistan will come to visit the unit to comply, to check the documentation provided and the GMP requirements by Pakistan. After that thing is done, then the, then the applications will be placed before the Central Assistant and Registration Board. And after the approval, the, the things can be imported. The procedure may take two to three years. Two years at least. Okay. Okay, so uh, are other things, uh, panelists, do you have any other uh, insights to add to Mr. Najem's point? Like Dr. Sadri, have you got any points? Okay, apparently there's no points to be added. Okay, so there's... Okay, so well, let's go ahead. Uh, now if someone has further questions, I told you I'll there be in Tehran from 22nd to 27th. I'll be visiting that uh, Iran pharma and most of the Iranian manufacturers will be there. We can also discuss in detail the one-to-one -one questions there and answer them also. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, maybe I have to stress it in Persian. Uh, so, 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 send me WhatsApp so that we can arrange it for them. باید دوستانی از که از آقای نجم فهم کنم میتونن کمک بگیرن ایشون از 22 تا 27 اوگست توی تهران خواهند بود از طریق واتساب نوز کاری میکنم از طریق واتساب ببخشید و ایمیل در دسترس خواهند بود Okay, so we've got another question How we can import biotech products? Um, I wish you would have mentioned that who do you want to address the question to but any of our uh, esteemed panelists, are you ready to give an answer to this question about importing biotech, uh, biotech products to Iran? <clears throat> biotech products are being registered in Pakistan from Iran. The, the procedures are almost the same, except that it has go to the biological committee before going to the central registration committee. They, they, and they, they just scrutinize your application and visit your plant and it can be done. And there's a great scope of biological products in Pakistan because none, uh, only one company is uh, producing biological products in Pakistan, whereas the scope of the products is very high. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, we've got another question. So our other panelists, Dr. Sadri, Dr. Um, uh, Mr. Takir al have you don't have any points to add? I think we, we don't have them. Okay, so another question is that, can we have an online one window registration? I think you already mentioned that it's the government's regulations. And uh, what? Sure, sure, please. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Sir, I can hear you. Please go on with your question or if you've got any notes to add. How many API manufacturers are in Pakistan? And how many percent of country for... I think your, it's your connection. Can you please start your question and ask it once again? I think you have already written it down in the um, in the chat box. How many API manufacturers are in Pakistan? Is that your question, or I think it's somehow related to what you were trying to ask? 
there are not many APM manufacturers in Pakistan, uh, but we are totally 70 to 80% dependent upon the import of APIs. Okay, so you're dependent on importing APIs. Right. Sir, did you receive the answer to your question? Unfortunately, we couldn't hear your voice and your question. Okay. So, do we have any other questions? Hello. Anyone, if you've got... Yes, hello. Yes. Good afternoon. From my side, my name is Sharun, and I am from uh, a pharmaceutical company uh, here. And my question is from uh, Mr. Najam. Uh, that you addressed about the biological products uh, that could be registered in Pakistan. What if we want to import from Iran and we want to register it here in Pakistan? Would it be the same procedure? Yes, the same procedure. We have to we have to go to the biological committee and address our issues, and we need to lodge the application. They will need to focus that uh, uh, this application is uh, okay to proceed, and then they will follow it up to the procedure of biological registration, right? Yes, and most probably they'll have an inspection of the unit in Iran also. So it is, is it must be mandatory that uh, the panel from here must visit Iran to check the company over there, which is producing yes. the bicycle, right? Till now the procedure is the same. Uh, one, of, one of the companies has always been done that. Okay. So what if we need to add the clinical trials? Because uh, there must be a clinical trials in Pakistan as well, right? Uh, I don't think so. There are requirements for that. The data provided by the Iranian company will be enough. If they provide you the dossier, that will be enough to register the product here? Yes, up to my knowledge, it's the same. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for this. Thank you. Uh, thank you for asking the question. And I thank people at our colleagues at um, Iran Pakistan Chamber of Commerce would be there to help you. Please get in touch with uh, Ms. Uh, Nazanin uh, for further information. Okay, any other questions? Yes, do you hear me? Oh. Yeah, I can hear you well. So please go on. Yeah, hello. So, hello. hello. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am talking uh, from the uh, Okay. John. Go on, please, with your. Is, is yes. there any specific uh, person in our panel to you want to ask the question from? Yes, uh, about the uh, one uh, bank transaction problem. Is there anybody to help us for the transaction problems uh, for from Pakistan to Iran? Um, Mr. Halaj, have you got any yes. solutions for his problem? I, I believe Mr. Masood uh, yeah. is going to answer. Uh, uh, sir, would you like to please elaborate your question so that I can comment on that? Yes, we are an API manufacturer in Iran, and uh, some customers from uh, Pakistan, some pharmaceutical manufacturers in Pakistan, interested in our products. And uh, of course, we are interested as well and wanted to export our APIs to Pakistani pharmaceutical manufacturers. But uh, the main problem here is the payment term. Do you know, due to USA sanctions uh, or banking uh, connections, uh, uh, have sanctioned and uh, they cannot receive any LC or BC from, Iran, from Pakistan. And as far as I know, the Pakistan also uh, prohibited to. Uh, uh, pay in TT uh, to, I mean, the other countries. Uh, so uh, our businesses uh, not uh, continue uh, by this uh, process. I am trying to find a solution for this purpose. Yeah, thank you very much for your question. Uh, you are right. There, uh, due to US sanctions on Iran, uh, there is no banking channel uh, between Pakistan and Iran at the moment. But despite that, you see that trade is going on between the two countries by adopting some uh, uh, payment settling mechanisms, uh, uh, which I think if you contact the Iran Chamber of Commerce, uh, because last year Iran exported more than worth 1 billion US dollar goods to Pakistan. 
so yes. there are way there are ways and means to settle the payment i would uh, advise or request you or uh, uk you may uh, contact us or you may contact uh, the tehran chamber of commerce they may guide you what are the uh, two three uh, various modes which the iranian business uh, men are using for setting their payment with pakistan yes yeah okay thank you. thank you very much for the information of the uh, uh, other people we are uh, api manufacturer with good quality i hope to have a good uh, business relationship with for pakistani pharmaceutical manufacturer thank you very much thank you and uh, other questions anyone If you've got any other questions, please simply raise your hand and ask your question. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? I can hear you well. Please go on, introduce yourself and ask your question, please. Thank you. Uh, nice to join uh, and share, get share information from all the audience. Uh, I have a question. How we can get the uh, details of Pakistani importers of medicinal herbs and plants for mutual business relationship? Okay, thank you very much for your question. Is there any way they can get the directory of pharmaceutical companies, Pakistani companies, so they get in touch with? Yes, can Actually, I think the question is not about the pharmaceutical product, but the medicinal plants. Oh, uh, okay. yes. The medicinal plants are norm coming very frequently to Pakistan, and uh, the people, especially the zafran and zeresh, cancer, so many things are coming. And in every major city of Pakistan, there are wholesale markets where, where importers are sitting. If you want some specific well, if you could specify the products which you are interested in export, then we can find the relevant matchmaking. Mm -hmm. Good, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Madam Murtazadeh, actually we have received a list of uh, Pakistani companies in this uh, sector and we are going to share it on our website in the beginning of the next week. Uh, you mean those who have registered for this event, right? Uh, yes, the, the list that the Related Association sent us yesterday. And uh, I think there will be a digital um, book for the, the, the actually the, as a directory of those who have registered for this uh, very event. And we will share it with those who have already registered and we've got the email addresses. So definitely we will be shared with them. So any other questions? No question. Uh, could my colleagues please let me know that if Mr. Moini is here, I think we have lost him, but he's back. Uh, Mr. Hallaj, do you think we can continue with his uh, presentation? For sure. Okay. So if Mr. Moini is here, Dr. Moini, you're welcome to give your speech. Actually, this is the final speech. Dr. Moini, are you here with us in the room? I think still we don't have him. Dr. Moini? He's not in the room. He's not in the room again. Okay, so I think we should call it a day if there are not any other questions. Mr. Halosh, have you got any final notes? No, I would like to thank the Honorable Mr. Ahmad Masood, also Mr. Jam and Mr. Tugar al uh, for the great efforts toward this meeting. And also, I would like to thank Mr. Murian. Actually, he's not in the meeting at the moment, but uh, he really helped us uh, for 
organizing this event and uh, I wish all success and blessing for all attendees today and please do not hesitate to contact us at Tehran Chamber of Commerce if there is any question or problem regarding the bilateral cooperation between Iran and Pakistan. We are at your disposal. Thank you very much. I also would like to appreciate your participation in, in the event from all the panelists and the audience who have joined us today. It's all, all about three hours that we've been here together. I think it was an insightful meeting. I hope it was insightful and um, useful for all the audience as well. Um, you can get into touch with Tehran Chamber of Commerce who had organized this meeting uh, with all other esteemed um, collaborators here. And uh, if you need any questions, if you've got any questions or you need any specific details about doing business with um, Pakistan or Iran, on the side of the Pakistani company, please do not hesitate to contact um, our colleagues at Tehran Chamber of Commerce. Thank you everyone again and hope uh, this, this is the step, the first step maybe, in uh, promoting the business between Iran and uh, Pakistan in pharmaceutical industry. Thank you everyone, have a nice day, goodbye.